It's a Manchu. Welcome to Minecraft Bedrock vs. Java, where I play through both versions of the game and compare them. I am back in my Bedrock Edition world here, and as you can see, my home base is in Woodland Mansion. The Woodland Mansion is huge! So huge that I really haven't needed to make a lot of big buildings. I have a wool farm in here, I have a pumpkin and melon farm, I have a trading hall, I have my chest storage, I have a bedroom, I have a bee farm, I have a small farm for nether wart, I have a general purpose crop farm, I have a dedicated automatic potato farm, all of this stuff that I have fit into this woodland mansion with plenty of room to spare, so I haven't built much here. In J the Java Edition world, since I don't have a home base for a woodland mansion, I've had to build a lot of things, but I haven't built much there lately. And I want to start working on a big project for the Java Edition world, which is going to require a lot of end rods. Now, I have been able to collect a decent amount of end rods when I was raiding end cities, like a stack and a half or so. That's not nearly as much as I need, however. But end rods can be crafted using renewable materials. One thing you need to craft them is chorus fruit. I happen to have, you know, eight or nine stacks of the stuff, so that's good. Besides eating chorus fruit, another thing you can do with it is you can cook it in a furnace. You can smelt it. And then you get popcorn fruit from that, from smelting it. There's a couple different crafting recipes for popcorn fruit. One thing you can do is combine them in a crafting interface to make purple block. Not my favorite kind of block. I don't really do a lot with that stuff. But another thing you can do is combine popcorn fruit with blaze rods to produce four end rods. So that's a way I can get the end rods I need. I have, as I've shown, plenty of chorus fruit that I can smelt up for turning into end rods. That's not a problem. But these three blaze rods you see are all the blaze rods that I have. So, and you know, in the Java world, I have an equivalent number of blaze rods, maybe even less. So I need some source of blaze rods. Today, I'm going to make a blaze farm, and I'm going to make one in the Java world and the Bedrock world. Let me just hop over to my creative test world for a second and show you some stuff about the design I'm going to make. All right, and here I am in a creative test world for Bedrock Edition. You can see behind me a blaze spawner, and that's what I'm going to make my blaze farm with. I'm going to use a blaze spawner that you find in Nether Fortresses. So the blue area that you see, the blue stained glass, is showing the diamond-shaped four-block taxicab distance and one block above or below. That is the spawning area around the spawner in Bedrock Edition. The regular glass is the area that mobs will spawn from a spawner in Java Edition. So it's a nine by three by nine area. It's a little bit bigger area. Because of this, there's a couple different ways you can make this farm. Well, there's actually many different ways you can make a farm, but there's a couple different main ways that you could do it. And I have demonstrated over here a couple designs. This is a design that's a diamond shaped design where the walls enclose the spawning area for the blazes. And a lot of expert Minecraft players that know a lot about the mechanics of how uh, Minecraft Better Condition works will make a farm like this. It works, it's nice, but this is a design you might use for Java Edition. It encloses the 9x9 area, plus a little bit more, that uh, blazes can spawn around the spawner in Java Edition. And it will work in Bedrock Edition as well. I like this farm design a lot better than this one. The main difference being, yeah, you need a little more material to make this, but it's so much simpler. This design is a little more complicated looking. It requires 10 lava sources to actually push the blazes over into where the trident killer is. I don't know how well I can show this, but you need a lava source. There, 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 and a tenth lava source there. And you have to place them in very precise positions and use some buttons over here as well to keep it from overflowing in order to push the blazes into the, the correct kill zone. Over here, you need four lava sources, one at each corner. 
it's so much simpler of a design to make. It's harder to screw it up, you know? And, you know, not counting the Trident Killer, which is, of course is a Bedrock exclusive, this design works in both Java and Bedrock. So I far prefer to use this design. It's just simpler to make. I set these up in a test world because I wanted to see, is there a reason why expert Bedrock players prefer to use this design? My initial results seem to indicate that actually this spawner is more efficient. Upon further testing, I found the results are pretty inconclusive. I can't really tell a difference in productivity between this design and this design. So again, I prefer this design, it's simpler, and that's the design I'm going to use. Alright, let me go back into my Bedrock Survival World and get to work on this. I think I have here all the ingredients I'm going to need to make this thing. And those ingredients include some potions of fire resistance. Equip this stuff, I'll get that out of the chest. Alright. Take the rest with me. Let's go into the nether and find ourselves a blaze spawner. It's kind of fortunate to find a nether fortress pretty close to where I came into the nether. Right over here, and there should be a blaze spawner not far away. Ideally, it'd be easier if I could find a blaze spawner that's uh, kind of underground, not exposed to the open air because that way I wouldn't get harassed by gas as I worked. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be possible in this case. Java edition, I might find one. But there's a blaze spawner right over there. First step I'm going to have to take is light this thing up so I don't get blazes spawning in. And that's easier said than done, because it's not simply a matter of putting one of these end rods or a torch or something on top of the spawner. That's not going to be good enough, because... Blazes, unlike a lot of mobs, only require a light level of less than 12 to spawn in instead of a light level of zero. So I'm going to have to actually spam in a lot more lighting. When I get over to Java Edition, I think that's enough. When I get over to Java Edition, I'm probably going to need even more lighting because it's a slightly larger spawning area. And I can't have anything with a block light of less than 12, or I'll get blazes spawning in. And that should be... Now the only danger I'm going to have is from gas, because I'm kind of exposed here. So I think I probably should start with the roof. I'm going to mark out a 2x2 two two area above the spawner, with the block above the spawner in blue. And then dig out under the spawner. I'm already off to a good start. I need it like that. There. So I have a, one glass block here, and then two by two above that. The two by two area underneath. The spawner that's in glass is just to, is it like a temporary marker to show me where that is. I'm nervous about the gas around here, but okay. Now I want to build out four blocks in every direction from this 2x2 two two space. Normally I'd like to start from the bottom and work up when building any kind of farm. But in this case, because of the danger of gas, it's better to start at the top. Make myself a roof to give myself cover. Although gas haven't been a big problem yet, because their aggro distance in... Bedrock Edition is different from Java Edition. In Java Edition, the gas would be aggroed at you and start shooting at you from up to, I think, 64 blocks away laterally, but only a short distance vertically. That'd be about the same level as you. In Bedrock Edition, I think it's something like 24 or 30 blocks in any direction. This glass area is outlining the 9x9 nine nine spawning area, plus a little bit more, really. That's going to be the footprint of the farm. And I'm just going to put some nether brick outside of this as an outer wall outside of that. Now I'm seven blocks, I'm standing seven blocks below the spawner. This area right here 
He's the 2x2 two two directly under that 2x2 two two there. I think I did that right. So this is the center of the farm. This is the pit where the Trinit Killer is going to go. From this spot, I need to make the platform four blocks out on every side. Just like I did for the roof. We're getting there. Here are those blocks. Now I just need to build up the walls. Well, I'm no great artist, but that looks okay, I think. That will do. Now, I just need to make the Trident Killer and a place to AFK underneath. need to make the trident killer. I want the base of the trident killer to be there. The chest there. The hopper's leading into it. Okay, for this particular trident killer, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. space in here that I can throw the trident in here and that experience will come out. I hope that none of the blazes will glitch out. I don't think they will. All right, solid blocks on top of each of the pistons. And I'm going to put activator rails here instead of... I had repeaters before, and here I'm going to use activator rails and then observers facing into the activator rails. This will work the same way as the Trident Killer and the general purpose mob farm that I made before, except instead of repeaters, I'm using activator rails here. That'll allow the pistons to fire a lot faster. Good, good, one more. Stick a lever somewhere. I think those are firing in sequence. They fire a lot faster than when I had the repeaters on two ticks. But that should be good. Now, where's that trident? Uh, the only enchantment I put on this trident was mending, just so I could repair it a little bit. Not that that's necessary, because the trident isn't going to lose durability as it's being pushed around by the pistons. It can do that forever without losing durability. And obviously impaling isn't going to do me any good here because impaling in bedrock condition only works on mobs that are in water. There's no water in the nether, so that's not going to do me any good. There's plenty of room for experience to get out to me. I'm just a little worried that the uh, blazes might be able to glitch out. I don't think they will. Let's hope not. All, right, all I need to do now to make this farm operational is put down the lava sources and break the lights on the top. I think here is where I'm going to need a potion of fire resistance. Also, I don't actually have any lava. I'm going to have to grab my bucket and get some lava. Alright, here comes the part where things are going to get interesting. Because <laughs> I got to break these lights out. As soon as I start breaking them out, I'm going to get... I'm going to get blazes spawning. Apparently this area is not quite well lit enough already. Alright, here goes. Break that. I have the fire resistance, so they can't really hurt me with their... fireballs, but... they can still hit me with melee attacks, so i got to be careful of that. It looks like I have an extra block there. That shouldn't be there. Okay, and that looks right. Okay. Let's break that out. 
Oh, like I said, still hit me with melee. Let's pick up all this stuff. Break these blocks so the blazes can actually fall in there. Alright, let's place these lava sources and get GTFO. Got it. Now let's get out of here. There. Now, as long as they can't see me, and they can't see me through the glass, they will just float down to the bottom. The lava sources will push them into that central pit where the Trident Killer is. I should be good. There we go. And the experience is coming in. And I'm holding my looting three sword, so I'm gonna get a benefit of that. I could just sit here AFK and collect all the blaze rods I want. All right, looks like everything's working right. Experience is rolling in. Let's wait here and collect all of the blaze rods that I'm ever gonna need. Now in my Java Edition world, the Nether Fortress I went to to find a blaze spawner. I found one that it wasn't exposed to sky, so it makes things a little easier. The downside is I can't have a trident killer for it. And I need to spam a lot more lighting to keep blazes from spawning in while I'm working. Otherwise, it works pretty much the same, and I will show you that build in a time lapse. You may have noticed from the time lapse that I made a small error when I was building it. I made the floor originally 9x9, it should be 10x10 10 10 with a 2x2 hole in the middle and the spawner centered over the hole. Instead I built out like four blocks in every direction from the spawner instead of four blocks in every direction from the 2x2 hole in the center. I just had to cut out the walls. After I put down the lava and saw, ooh, it's not fitting, <laughs> it was pretty simple to fix. But I stand by what I originally said. This box design of Blaze Farm, and really any kind of spawner farm can use a similar kind of footprint, it's easier than the diamond shaped design. It's just easier to do. Harder to screw it up. Obviously, unlike with the Bedrock Edition, 
I can't do this fully AFK. I do have to actually swing the sword at the blazes because there's no Trident Killers in Java Edition. Otherwise, same design. And so far, I think I've already collected more than enough blaze rods to do the job. If you made it this far in this video, you probably like what you saw, so click on the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Now I should be able to make enough end rods to do that major build that I was going to work on. And I will work on that, and maybe some other project, next time in Amon chooses Minecraft Java vs. Bedrock.